Yo, so I'm going to be showing you how to build LFT. It's a new 1.7 tower. It stands for Lava Fence Tower. Um, this is not everything that you need. A couple things are interchangeable. The chest and soul sand, you can use either one of them for the elevator. Um, and then the nether brat or the nether rack, it's just if you don't have leaves, you need a lot more of it. If you have like a stack or two stacks of leaves, and we need like maybe 10 nether rack or something. Um, but then your slabs and your fence. So I'm just gonna go in peaceful so mobs don't spawn. But to start out, you dig out this uh, two by three with a block right there, dug out. Dig out these three, replace these all with solid blocks. And then you do that. Four slabs, the fence and the lava. Build this, you can throw the other slab into lava if you want, or you can place it where that solid block was. Um, and then you place a leaf right there. Jump on that, place a solid block, break this leaf. From here you can build up four blocks. Uh, one thing you're also going to want to do, while you dig out that hole, I didn't do it, but make sure you pick up two sand, just because you need it for the elevator. So while you dig out, you want to make sure that you pick up at least two sand. If you have gravel, you can use that too, but you usually want that to grind for flint, so... Sand is probably better. Uh, you build this little thing right here. You go up two blocks and place a TNT. Place your two sand, then your solid block. Bridge out this, that's where your bed goes. Um, you can place TNT or leaves here. One thing to note though, if you only have two TNT, it's better to use... Uh, so basically, the TNT insta breaks, right? And the leaf doesn't, so... TNT here and in other places where you break a block is just faster. Um, but if you only have two TNT, it's more important to place it by the bed than that one. Um, and I'll show later, but so basically two TNT or two leaves here. Put up two solid blocks and then your ladder on the side right there. You build up 14 from here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Your 14th block is the solid one with the ladder. And then the ledge on this tower is 114 blocks. So to calculate what you need to do, you can lean over the tower, look at the FL counter right here. That shows you what the ground level is. Um, so my ground level, as you saw, was 64, so I'm going to build up to 178. I'm just going to go in creative to make this faster. One thing to note, while in runs, um, it's usually faster to... Uh, or it is faster to manually press spacebar instead of holding it. So I'm at 177, 178 will be my block with the ladder on it. From here, you're gonna to wanna to go up seven or 15 blocks. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15. Bridge out this right here. And then if it's nighttime for you, uh, you're gonna to want to go to two render distance. I'm just going to go to peaceful anyways, because there might be some mobs down there. But if it is nighttime, go to render distance. If it's like 1050 or later, that's usually when you want to do it. Just so that mobs don't spawn at the bottom. So you're going to land down here. I'll switch back to easy. You're going to sleep in this bed, and then fall backwards. Okay, whatever. Um, and then you're going to break this leaf, this leaf, and then this stack right here. If you have shears, it's a lot faster to break them with that. Um... One thing to note, while you were falling down from the ladder onto the bed, you can sort your hotbar and get the things that you need for the elevator and the dig down, like your two pickaxes. Um, you're going to want your sword just in case like you dig into a cave or something. You don't need your bucket anymore because you don't have water. If you did have water, it would be nice to have that on the dig down, but because we have lava, we don't have the opportunity to have more water. So basically, you want two pickaxes, your shovel, you can have a sword, on your elevator block, your flint and steel, and then uh, you can have solid blocks and whatever else other than that. It doesn't matter. You just want like one or two test blocks too also. But that would just be the netherrack and the leaves for me. Um, so right now I'm at 20. My ground level is 64, so you dig down 44 blocks down here. And you build out this thing. You can let yourself on fire to task overlap mining this out while you're doing it. Um, it's just a little risky sometimes if you're low on health. I'm going to go to easy so that I actually die. 
Um, but yeah, you can let yourself on fire at a task overlap placing all this, but you place one chest there, one solid block on that, two chests right here, throw out your test blocks. I usually throw two or three just because sometimes if you place it, uh, they can be a little bit buggy. They can fall back out and not actually go up and test. So I usually do two or three test blocks. You don't have to, I just do it to be safe. Um, yeah, and then you die. Make sure you put out the flint and steel before you die. And you're going to respawn at the top. Up your render distance if you were on two. And then this is just how you use the tower. One thing to note, if you have leaves, you want to make sure that you go to fancy leaves so that you can see through them. Just like that, so you can tell when the enderman fell in. Um, if you didn't have leaves for the tower build, and you had to place like netherrack here, uh, it's a little bit more awkward. You would just have to quake pro to be able to see when the endermen fall down. That's all this is for. So it's pretty nice to have leaves for this tower build, just so that you can see through that right there and not have to go quake pro. Um, but if you don't have leaves, then you can just go quake pro and you can eat, tell when the endermen fall down the tower hole. But yeah. If it's a cycle with no enderman, you can just fall off the side like that, it's a little bit faster. If you don't see it in time, it's not that big of a deal, though, barely loses any time. You want to make sure after you aggro the enderman, you walk down here, because that's, uh, where the tower hole is. If I walk right, right here, the endermen would just gather around there. So that's why you want to be here. Okay, so let's say you want to check how many pearls you got. Oh, wait for this enderman to die first. But basically what you're going to want to do is fall down onto that block right there. You're going to want to fall down here, walk over here, pick up any string around your tower, and then fall down the tower hole. And you can open your inventory and check how many pearls you have. It's important to try to collect all the strings so that you don't have to collect it after leaving the tower. Because if there's a, a lot of mobs around your tower, then it would be pretty hard to collect it without dying or something. Uh, so what bringing it in the tower hole does with you, um, it makes it so that when you elevate your items, it'll be with your inventory that gets elevated up. So that you don't need to manually pick it up. Uh, so that's how you check. Um, so this right here is a very rare case scenario. Basically, the Endermen, they took two sands. This actually took three here. This is extremely unlikely. This should not happen that much in runs. Um, but if it does, it's just kind of unlucky. I don't know. It's not really, there's not really anything you can do to fix it. So you just lose the Endermen. But this is kind of a, a problem with a lot of towers anyways. It's only not a problem with towers that have different heights of the base. But with LFC, you want the base to be lower so that you aggro more spiders. Um, but yeah. I'll show you what to do if you want to leave the tower. This is the regular exit. Let's say this is my last cycle. I'll aggro all the endermen. Uh, one thing, make sure you don't crouch while you're looking at Enderman like this. If you crouch while looking at Enderman, it decreases your range. So make sure you do not crouch while you aggro them. But yeah, let's let's say I want to leave on this cycle. What I'm going to do is jump, break those two TNT, break this netherrack right here, and then break that TNT and die. Then you can sleep. This is just the regular LFT exit. I'll show a couple other variations. But you sleep, gather the bed, fall onto this block. Then you'll just wait for your items to come up, just like that. One important thing to note, um, when you set up your elevator down at the bottom, you want to make sure that you do not set it up the way towards your lava. Um, because obviously if you elevator anything this way, when it comes up, it's going to just go straight into your lava. 
So make sure you do not elevate your items the way your lava is. You can hear it all just burned. Um, but yeah, I'll set up the elevator again real quick. I'll demonstrate one other exit. Um, so, oh, I broke my bed. One other type of exit. There's there's two other main ones that I'll talk about briefly. But one exit you would maybe want to do is if uh, you didn't need any extra arrows from like spiders around, then you would want to do a two wordy exit. If you have all your string already and you have all your arrows, um, what the 2RD exit does, it makes it so that when you leave your tower, there will not be that many mobs around you, so it will not be uh, like a war zone when you leave the tower. So what that looks like, um, let me place my sand again. So, I didn't place my spawn on the bed. Let's say this was my last cycle right here. I would fall down and get any remaining endermen. And then instead of jumping up and breaking those two blocks right here, you would just go two render distance. You would break this block and break the TNT, die, and you fall to the side instead of in front. And you would catch this side ladder, sleep in the bed, break these TNT, and fall down here. And then you wait for your items to come up and collect them. So that is a two render distance exit. And then there's one other main exit that you can do. And this is for the rare case scenario where you throw your test blocks in the elevator and they do not come up. So basically that would mean that your elevator hit a cave. So you obviously do not want to elevator your items after they hit a cave because you would just not get them back. So what you would do for this, again, let's say I'm on my last cycle right here. I'll raise my render distance. Let's say I'm on my last cycle. Get the Enderman. And then what you're gonna wanna do, break these two sands and break the TNT. You can actually do that anytime during the tower cycle, but you break those and then you're gonna wanna break the two TNT and then break these two blocks you're gonna die and then right as you press the respawn button you're gonna immediately walk forward and then backwards to fall down the tower hole just like that um, and you'll hit that at the bottom of the tower and then since you didn't elevate your items all of them will be there um, it's annoying. all your items will be at the bottom and then you'll just tower out like normal you can sleep down there too so that there won't be a lot of mobs like this um, but yeah those are all the exits. There is one other exit called the trampoline exit. That's where you have all your TNT at the bottom. But I won't be talking about it because it's a little bit more complicated and somebody else has a video about it. Um, so one other last thing I want to mention is when you want to use this tower. The general consensus around LFT right now is that it's a little bit slower to build than OBT. So basically you only want to build this tower if you already have arrows or feathers. Uh, pre-tower because if you already have arrows and feathers then it becomes a lot more important to get string so you don't do an arrowless end fight because those are just bad so basically if you have arrows pre-tower use this if you do not have arrows then you can use obt it's kind of a preference but i think it's generally better to use obt if you do not have any arrows and then if you have string enough to craft a bow or a bow pre-tower just from a skeleton or a mine shaft or something then you obviously wouldn't use this tower because you don't need the auto string anymore um so yeah thanks to chaos mainly for developing this tower a few others like sharpie man 20 anthony um ultimate and seaskill and lout lout uh people like that have made other discoveries for tower that have led to this being built but mainly chaos has been the one to design and optimize this tower build uh so yeah that's it